Welcome back. And this is the second half of my Happy National Book Lovers Day post. I have been to work as Lizzie Bennett and come home and I want to talk a little bit about why I love books and reading and by extension why I love Jane Austen. I don't remember a time when I didn't read. Um, I read very early. My mother would read to me while she fed my little brothers. So I would hold the book or I would read to her. And so by the time I started kindergarten, I, I read a lot. Um, and if I didn't have a book, I would read anything that had printed matter that was close. I would read cereal boxes and shampoo bottles and maps and signs, just anything. And it just, I kept accumulating books. I have thousands of them now because I can't stop buying them. Even when I have a self-imposed moratorium on buying books, I just buy more of them. I would take you on a video tour of my house to prove it, but my house is kind of a mess because it's it's covered in books and if not books, cat hair, and I haven't cleaned that up and I don't want you to see it, sorry. So you'll have to take my word for it. Said my favorite author is Jane Austen. Um, when I was eight for Christmas, my grandmother gave me an unabridged edition of Pride and Prejudice that was illustrated with really pretty color plates um, and I read it. And I, I didn't understand it, uh, but nobody said, oh, you shouldn't read that. That is a grown-up book or it's too hard. I just read it and I reread it several times um, till about, you know, I was in high school and the Persuasion with Amanda Root and Kieran Hines came out. And so then I read Persuasion and The Sense and Sensibility that Emma Thompson adapted came out. So I read Sense and Sensibility and then Emma because Clueless came out. And then I just polished it off with Northanger Abbey and Mansfield Park, which conveniently I think also had a movie about the same time. Um, and it's probably a good idea I read Mansfield Park last. Um, Fanny Price is about the farthest thing you can get from Elizabeth Bennet in the Austin canon. Um, so by the time I got to Fanny, I understood her character and how she operated much better than had I read her when I was much younger. Being an Austin fan, you would think I would read all of the Austin sequels and side-alongs and alternate endings and adaptations and modernizations and th the whole Austin fanfiction canon. Um, and I actually don't read that many. Um, I don't like many of them that I read. I have trouble with them. Um, if they could rehash the plot of the original too much, like Death Comes to Pemberley by P.D. James, I picked that up. I was like, oh, P.D. James is a Mr. Arthur. This is going to be absolutely amazing. And it feels very heavy-handed, in my opinion. It, it, it relies too much on, you know, inter reintroducing us to the characters of the original Pride and Prejudice and less on a really great mystery. There are some adaptations that I love, like Clueless and Bridget Jones's Diary, where it obviously takes the ideas and the premise of the original novels, but then it very much stays within its own world. Um, and those are the ones I really like. As we all know, I went as Lizzie Bennet today from the Lizzie Bennet Diaries. Um, and they do a really great job of adapting the ideas of the book and the pressures in the book. Um, and so they use the device of the vlog to get that point across and allow Lizzie to grow within that year. And also some of the side characters as well. The Lydia character in this adaptation grows so much more than in Austen's original, and I think is actually an improvement. Lydia remains very much as she is in Austen's original novel, but she grows and learns in the adaptation for the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, and I enjoyed that very much. The Mischief of the Mistletoe, this is a Pink Carnation novel. I think it is technically now Pink 7. And Jane appears as a character um, who was a friend to the heroine Arabella. Um, their fathers have similar backgrounds. They're both clergymen. They're both not well off and they're both now living in Bath um, because of family illness and circumstance and things like that. And Jane very much appears as a family friend. She is slightly older than Arabella, but she's a good sounding board. And at one point she does kind of move the plot along by pointing out um, some very pertinent facts about women who just don't have a lot of money and must work um, for their living um, to the hero who um, is very literal, as his little sister says. So I like this one quite a lot. Jane feels very real in this book, and I like 
the way that Willie did her adaptation. It's called Longborns by Joe Baker. And what it does, it retells Pride and Prejudice as it is set in the original time period, but it is told from the point of the servants. Um, our protagonist is Sarah. She is a maid in the Bennett household. So she is up at four o'clock in the morning every day to fetch the water for bathing and cooking and cleaning. And she has to help the girls dress. She acts as their ladies maid. She helps serve. She helps cook. And the nice thing about this one is that you know, you don't ever step out of the servant's worldview. Um, if there's something going on, a servant must be in the scene. So we don't see a lot of the beats that we see in Pride and Prejudice where, you know, Lizzie is proposed to by Mr. Darcy. We get it very obliquely because Sarah is not in that room when this happens. She is more concerned with the fact that she has to get grass stands out of Lydia's petticoats or mud off of boots or, you know, Mr. Collins is very particular and, and they're very, the servants are very worried that if something happens to Mr. Bennett and Mr. Collins takes over the household, that he might evict the staff wholesale. So they very much put themselves out to make him feel comfortable and welcome in hopes of keeping their jobs if something were to happen in the Bennett household. So it's a very good book. She's very accurate as far as how the servant class works. So I have a little bit of a thing with Jane Austen criticism. I have things like the Cambridge Companion to Jane Austen. Um, and then What Matters in Jane Austen. This is actually a really fun book because the author, um, he takes questions like what do characters call each other? And then investigates that in the books because it's very much a period thing that, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Bennet call each other Mr. and Mrs. Bennet. They don't call each other by first name, and that was very much a social convention at the time. So he picks questions like that, or which characters never speak, because there are actually some very important characters who never have a single word of dialogue in any of Austen's books, and that's very interesting. So he, he examines the books through these questions, and it helps explain how things work. This is Among the Jainites. It's by Deborah Yaffe. It came out within the past year, and it examines the phenomenon of Jane fans, you, you know, the fans of Jane Austen herself, not just of the books, but of the woman and her life, people who write the fan fiction or organize the conferences for Jasna and things like that. And she herself, she, she goes through all the preparations to attend the big Regency Ball at the Jane Austen conference. Um, so as, you know, she goes through the proper undergarments and the proper fitting of a Regency gown and things like that, she takes us through that. And it's very interesting to read, and she has a really good voice. That is me, and I will see you next time. Bye. I've got the cats. They should be quiet now.